Hello and welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. This is episode 33. Happy fall! And I'm your host, Steph, also known as the Knitting Samurai over on Ravelry. I'm sorry, it's been more than my usual 10 days, 10, I feel like my glasses are crooked, 10 days or so. Um, life just kind of got away from me. And I had an opportunity to record, but then I didn't want to record until I finished uh, the project I was working on, and it got shifted back, and then we've just been really busy these last couple weekends, so <sighs> it hasn't worked out for me. And as it is, I am talking to you on a Tuesday night. I never, ever, 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 ever record um, after work, because uh, that means I'm pretty brain dead normally. So... We'll see how I do. <laughs> it was a, a hectic day at work, and then I had to run a couple errands afterwards, and by the time I got home, there was time for finishing up dinner, a few minutes of playing, and bath, and off to bed. So I haven't even settled down. This is me settling down. I'm settling down with you um, at the grocery store today. Steve went to the grocery store, and he picked up some of that pumpkin spice creamer. He wanted to find pumpkin spice coffee, couldn't, found the creamer instead. It's delicious. It's decaf, so I'm safe, so I'm just going to have a little. I hope you're enjoying some sort of beverage, alcoholic or not. Um, yeah, so let's get into the knitting. I have not done um, a lot of the things I was planning on knitting. I know I was all about the Christmas knitting, and one of my coworkers, because I work in a... Um, it's back office retail, basically. So I'm, I'm at the headquarters, anyways, doing the analysis of sales. And one of my coworkers looked at me and she said, it's 80 days till Christmas. And I was like, oh, wow, I, I talked about that on the podcast. And I was like, 120. It is just flying by and sneaking up on me. Uh, it, and it always does. It's always like the day after Thanksgiving. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should start Christmas shopping. But this year, it's going to be different. Anyways, but before we jump into Christmas, let's just enjoy the fact that it is beautiful fall weather out there, at least in New England. I am loving my commute into work every day, staring, because I have about a half an hour commute. I go over two bridges over the ocean, or the bay in the ocean, and then, um, and then it's the, you know, 95 commute kind of takes you along the coast a bit, and the colors are just glorious right now, so... If you would like to be a leaf peeper and come to New England, I highly recommend the first week of October. <laughs> uh, when one of my friends was laughing, he's from, where is he from? Oh shoot, same place Knitter 2 is from. <laughs> Has a north. Oh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> it's not my fault, I'm tired. Those states, north. Carolina. Is he from North Carolina? Is she from North Carolina? Somebody's from, he's from North Carolina. I know he is. Um, and he had never heard the term leaf peeper before this year. And so he's just been quite thrilled with this concept of people sneaking around to sneak up on the leaves and peep. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I promised it'd be interesting, right? After work. So. Let's look at my undulating rib socks first up on the needles because you really, you'd like to hear about New England, but I know you're here to talk about knitting. <laughs> so this is um, a sock I'm knitting for Steph. Uh, Busy Minds, Busy Minds Design is her Etsy shop. She does these great project bags. I don't have mine out down here. It's upstairs. Uh, so she and I did a, a trade. She knit this beautiful shawl that I'm wearing. It is the Thinking of Waves by Yellow Cosmo, and she used, um, it was a test knit when she did it, and she used Cascade Heritage, which is a 70-25 wool, a 75-25 wool nylon. And it has, so she was working on this at SSK, and I saw it, and I was like, that is gorgeous. I love all the textures. I love the blue. It's beautiful. And I wanted to knit it. Well, the pattern wasn't out, and so she said, oh, 
I'll give it to you. You can have mine. I'm not going to wear this. So she sweetly sent me hers, and I said, well, I'm not going to take it for nothing, so let me knit you something. And she said, has never had hand knit socks, if you remember all this story, and I'm not going to get this on nicely. And uh, anyways, I never had hand knit socks, so I said, oh, I'll knit you a pair. So here's the first one, and this is the Undulating Rib Sock by Ann Bud. Um, Steph was also working on purple shawl, or had finished the purple shawl. It's a very similar color. Anyways, so I grabbed this. This is Barocco Comforts, no, Barocco Sock, in read your notes, genius, in the color 1452, and I'm knitting them on U.S. 1.5 needles, and you can see there not a lot of progress has been made, which is sort of ridiculous because this is for a September October knit along, and I started it very early in September, if I recall correctly. And I should really be done. A pair of socks should not take two months, so that's as far as I am. I know, I know. Um, I did make, I don't know if I want staff to know this, but I'm going to tell you anyways. I did make a mistake on this, on the first one. Um, the pattern repeat is an eight row repeat, and there's one section on here where I actually uh, flubbed it and did ten rows. So I want to make sure I make it match on the second one. I know, I know. But it would look funny if the ribs don't quite line up. So, anyway, so those are on the needles. Slow, 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 slow. And if it takes me ten plus days to talk to you again, they should be off the needles by then. Hopefully. So, well, probably not, no, because I am completely obsessed with uh, what I've been knitting lately. And that, my dear friends, is not what I'm going to show you next. <laughs> next, I'm going to show you what I finished. So I didn't want to podcast when I could have because I wanted to have this done. I'm looking at the monitor because I think I hear a noise, but I have it set to just the lights and nothing is flashing at me. So, I don't have a video monitor. I know a lot of people do. Uh, my coworkers at my baby shower at work bought me a video monitor, but that was not what I wanted. It only had one viewing screen, and plus it seemed a little creepy to me. I have since talked to a lot of moms, and a lot of moms swear by the video monitor, because then you know if they're sitting there up, but not talking, or if they're actually sleeping. It doesn't really bother me. If he's not complaining and he's, you know, up for 10 minutes before he starts talking and he's just looking around his room, I think that's okay. It's okay to be a little quiet time yourself. So, anyways, our monitor just has lights. Ah, my eye itches. And you know what? I have fall allergies and it looks like he does too. So that's kind of disappointing. But, <laughs> this is the finished but not woven in tartine and this is by Kristen Griffin Grimes from the wait for it it will pop up French Girl Knits Accessories book um, not the pattern I bought the book for but it is the cover pattern for the book and when I saw it I thought of my best friend so I knit this for her and I used um, what did I use? What is that yarn? I'm just wondering, what if I finish this last time and it's been so long since I've recorded that you're like, yeah, we already saw that, Don Genius. Hurry it up. Let me just flip. Let me just flip. I didn't say anything about it, so I apologize if I've shown this to you before. You missed it. You needed to see it again. Anyway, so I used um, Mad Tosh Merino Light in the Thicket colorway, and Claudia Hand Paints in the Mud Creek, Rock Creek, must be Rock Creek colorway. It's on the project page if you would like to see, and it's in the show notes, which can be found at Knitting Samurai plus number one dot blogspot dot com. <laughs> um, so you can see it has a really nice staggered decreases so you don't get these edges it just makes the bullseye. I will say that I did the, I followed the instructions for the jogged stripes. I really despise the way that looks. I would, it looks really messy to me to have this diagonal slip stitch. I'm hoping that that will come out in blocking when um, 
when I do actually block it. I'm not going to put this on because, well, I guess I could. But um, the other thing about this project is I had a difficult time in the initial um, with this scalloped edge. For some reason, no fault of the pattern, my brain just, I didn't get the technique right until about halfway around the hat. And by that point, I don't know, it was something, 150, 200 stitches. It was a lot of stitches, and I was being lazy and said, ah, it's fine. You're supposed to uh, weave, actually, I reread the pattern because I thought it was a ribbon through that. It's not. It's um, a piece of I-cord from the darker color. I don't really want that. I want a nice piece of like velvety ribbon to go through that scalloped edge. So hopefully I will know that these are not as neat as I would like them to be, but I will be the only one. That's what I'm hoping. We'll see. Um, she's not a knitter. She's not going to care. She's going to be like, hey, thanks for the pretty hat. So, and it is a really long hat. Oh, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not. I'm just not because, you know what, I have a massive squash. Yes, I do, and that's why my son has a massive squash. Um, well, that and his father also has a very large head. Steve's head is bigger than mine. But my girlfriend has much smaller. So, um, this will fit her, and she will love it, and it's really soft. And this is my third project with the uh, Mad Tosh Thicket, with that Tosh Merino light in the Thicket colorway, and I just can't get enough of it. I really love it, and I think it goes super well with the uh, Claudius. It just the thicket brings out the purple in the in the Claudia hand paints. So that is finished and off the needles. I know, I know. I told you I would work on the sampler cowl and uh, the fingerless mitts and, and washcloths and Christmas knitting and all these things, and I really didn't get to any of them. Um, yeah, we've had three car trips, I think, since I spoke to you last, my grandmother passed away, and then we went up to visit Steve's parents, and then we went to a birthday party for one of Steve's cousin's son, and it was just a lot of driving around, and I didn't want to associate, knit those memories into a project I really enjoyed, so for the grandmother, for the other two it was fine. So, anyways, I, I don't know why I brought that up. Drink a sip of coffee. It's getting kind of cold. I'm not much of a hot coffee drinker, to be honest. So, you wanna see what I've really been working on? And I'm kinda hot, so I'm gonna take this off, even though that's the only color pop. I know, beige, beige. But it's dark out, it's in the evening, so I can record in front of the window. Um. So what I've really, really, truly been working on is the, oh, that's not this, <laughs> the Paper Line Pullover by Sarah Fama, and this is from Knit Scene uh, Winter Spring 2011, so this is a rather, a bit of an older pattern, so that is a sewn or knit in pieces pullover with this big beautiful cowl. I didn't realize until I had after, because read, I skimmed. Let's be honest, I'm bad. I'm bad and I know it. Mm. <laughs> I didn't realize that this wasn't more than a line of stitching. The um, There's like an inch of a folded under hem of, in a contrast color, which is really a cute detail. I did not do it on the uh, pieces. I have knit so far, but I'm going to do it on the cuffs, so. I, the yarn I'm using is, um, it's called Reynolds Review. Here is what it looks like. This is, this is the color 1410. For some reason I have it listed as asparagus. I don't know if that's from their website or if I just think it looks like asparagus, but it's this very green, green yarn. And it's funny, one of the first sweaters I knit myself, I think the second sweater I knit myself, um, is it, about the same color. So the reason I picked this yarn was that I wanted to, I picked out the sweater first. I was in the mood, it was a Friday night. I knew we were driving to his parents the next day. I wanted a bigger project. I didn't want to work on socks. I just wanted to change. And I haven't knit a sweater for myself, like a full on sweater yet this year. And I like to knit one every year. 
So I found that pattern, really like that pattern. Pulled out my magazines sitting here. I think we were watching Sherlock and I was just going through looking for a pattern and it was like, okay, first one I find that I like, that's what I'm gonna do. So, <laughs> so I found that one, I liked it. I started searching on Rav through my yarns for worsted weight yarn. Came upon the review. Review? Review. I love this yarn. Um, it's unfortunately discontinued. It's 100% super wash, extra fine merino. Uh, worsted weight, 112 yards per ball. Yes. This, um, I've knit several hats with it. I think I knit a baby sweater with it. Enough so that my local LYS know, knew that I loved it. Um, and when the yarn, when she decided to stop carrying it before it was discontinued, she called me up and said, okay, we're doing a, uh, a sale, buy the whole lot, get half off or something. I don't know. They do that periodically with old yarns. There were like five yarns and she knew that I loved that yarn and just wanted to make sure I got in there and got a chance. And I happened to be traveling that weekend when she called. This was like two years ago. And I was like, oh, Margo, I can't make it. I can't get the yarn. And she was like, Psst, come in after work. We won't tell anyone. So I went in the like the Thursday before, I think, after work, picked up the yarn, picked up a navy, a green, and a maroon. I got enough of the maroon and this green to knit myself sweaters. <laughs> I really like this yarn. So uh, realized I had enough of that to do this project. So for my size, it was like 1,900 yards. So because not a little girl. So <laughs> so. Um, this is knit on US size sevens, six for the edging, sevens for the bulk of the garment. And then I don't know if you can see it from here, but it has this interesting waist shaping in the center of the garment, which I had not seen before. And at first, I think the pattern called for a cotton yarn and I attributed that waist shaping showing so much to the fact that it was cotton and stitch definition and wool that'll blend it over. No, not so much. And it is a design feature of the sweater itself. And so, fine, I'm keeping with it. <laughs> so that's fine. I love big drapey cowl necks. I think a lot of us that wear shawls, um, either you've learned to appreciate having big stuff around your neck or you already did and that's why you like shawls. So, enough rambling about it and I will show you what I've done. So first, here is what's on the needles right now, mid-row, because that's how responsible I am. Uh, I love it. I love it, love it, love it so far. So that is the back panel. And this loveliness is the front. So it is going to be a gloriously long, not super long, but a good length sweater, like mid to low hip on me. Uh, I have exactly the right amount of yarn for my size in the main color. So they, this pattern has about an inch, you can see it, of this um, folded under hem. That was supposed to be knit in contrast color. Pfft, missed that part. So I've actually used more of it than I thought. So my plan, here's the plan kids, is to knit the front, the back, and then block them, seam them at the shoulders, knit the cowl, because that has to be spot on. Knit the sleeves, their top, or they start at the wrist and go up. Knit the sleeves with the contrast color, weigh my yarn, my green that I have left, split it, and then whatever I can do, I can do for the sleeve. So we'll see if that works out. It would work if I were doing sleeves from the shoulder down, obviously, and knit until you run out of green yarn. And I'm probably going to knit the sleeves in the round rather than this back and forth. I hate purling. Oh, dear God, do I hate purling. <laughs> so maybe I'll adapt the pattern that way and do a pick up around and then knit down. That might be smarter. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I haven't knit enough sweaters that way. Yeah, usually I've, if I've done them, they're yoke sweaters and it's all one piece, right? So maybe that doesn't work. Who knows? Maybe I'll knit three sleeves, you know, knit one, see how, knit half the yarn, see how much that takes. Maybe I'll make them three quarter, just straight out the gate, because I do like shorter length sleeves. Anyways, but it's it's exciting, and dare I say it that this could, I mean, we are ten days out, so I'm not gonna finish it, but I'm going to have it in my head as a Rhymex sweater. <laughs> 
I made the reservations, the boys and I are going, we are leaving late on Friday night, driving halfway, staying with some relatives, friends, relatives, whatever, same difference, um, staying with them, getting up early in the morning while the bean sleeps, driving the rest of the way so that we can hopefully get to the fairgrounds by 9 a.m., playing around all day as long as we can before nap time. Um, we're staying in Fishkill. I don't know. Everything was booked. I was so irresponsible about this. This is the first time I've had to book. Usually my girlfriends do it. So, um, yeah, we're a bit away. away. But I'm going to be there Saturday and Sunday. I'll have buttons. I would love, 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 love to meet you guys. So if you're going to be there, um, I'll, let's open up a thread on Ravelry and talk about it. And maybe we can meet up. I don't know if there's a Ravelry meetup or if other podcasters are doing something. I have been sorely neglectful of the Ravelry as of late because I'm sort of consumed by this need to finish the sweater. So, because I know I'm going to hit a point where all my momentum is going to go away and I'm not going to want to do anymore. So, while I can, while I'm running downhill, while it's easy, just run, just go and knit as fast as I can, which is what I'm doing. Except then I fall asleep at night. So, um, that is what is going on in my world. The other thing that I, I have been spying on and checking out is the, um, the fall thread that is in the Knitting Samurai Plus One group. I really loved reading that. Oh my god, I was having a really tough day not that long ago. <laughs> and I hopped in there and just Raylan, Raylan 01, her description of the Maple City just it almost it made my heart sing. It brought tears to my eyes. I thought it was so beautiful. It made me so happy. So I just want to say, Raylan, thank you so much. I would love to gift you a pattern of your choice. Shoot me a PM and I will drop you that. I will shoot one off to you. Shoot a pattern off to you. And then I'd also like to, because I haven't done any drawings in so long. Um, and really, honestly, the cost of postage versus the cost of just buying a pattern. You know, you got to pay the postage. You got to get to the post office. Logistically, it's a pain in my butt. So I would like to just do some patterns here for a while. So um, there were 32 posts in that thread. I did a bit of them. So obviously I'm not going to buy myself a pattern, but I am going to go and do a random number generator for 2 through 32 and say generate. And let's see whose beautiful fall description Wins out. Number 11. Um, and if I flip back over here, because of course I have it open and I'm ready to go. Oh, let me know if the volume is still okay. If it's not okay, tell me. Um, number 11. How weird is this? Is Raylan's post. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. So, she can't win twice. No. That was be awful. So, we'll generate again. Oh, number 6. Number six is Penelope 10. I believe Penelope and I share an LYS. And shh, don't tell Margot, I told on her. So, <laughs> Penelope loves Starbucks pumpkin spice latte. I have fallen victim to the pumpkin spice latte as well. I think foliage was one of the most common ones. Putting on your sweaters, pulling out your favorite knits, the pumpkin drinks, the harvest food. It, it's just a lovely thread, and I thank you all so much for posting in there. This is my favorite time of year. I did purposely have a child this time of year so I would be off and could enjoy it. My wedding is this time of year. Like, I just love the fall. Makes me sing. So, uh, Penelope 10, shoot me a PM about a pattern you would like and I will send that your way. Please try and keep them under the $7 mark. Seven or less. So, that's it for me, folks. I hope you are enjoying what's going on in your knitting world. And I would say talk again in the next 10 days or so. But in the next 10 days, I'll be going right back. I hope the boys like it. I hope I get pictures of us in front of that beautiful, beautiful orange maple tree. So, you know the one at the center of running back. Oh, it's so pretty. And I know, <coughs> excuse me. I'm not going to be a yarn crazy buying person. I'm going to drink wine and watch pumpkin chucking and sheepdog trials and all kinds of things. And if you see 
me with a backpack and a baby that is completely adorable that you sort of recognize. Come over and say hi. I would love to meet you. So, and if you're not going to Rhinebeck, I hope you get to some sort of winter harvest festival in your area because it is a great time of year. So, take care. I'll talk to you soon. Maybe take some footage from the road from Rhinebeck, from the baby in the car. Who knows what I'll, I'll find my way to recording. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Bye.